All right, as we uh, got the balancer off, and I'm looking here, and I just I'm trying to figure out where all this oil's coming from because this thing is just caked. And the reason why it's so important to get this under control because there's other rubber components down here, um, like your steering rack, and this one has a lot of yuck on it. If I can get the camera to actually show you guys. I mean, all that over time just degrades the rubber, and right now we're in a Subaru project replacing half all the rubber components because of the same problem, seals not being fixed. Albeit this car is 137,000 miles and it shouldn't be leaking like this, I agree with you, but it is, it needs to be fixed, otherwise, you know, this is going to be a showstopper. This is what causes these cars to catch on fire, is a combination of collected fluid uh, heat and over time it just becomes a fireball. I've seen about 10 of these in junkyard burned up and every time I go out and see one I try to figure out what did it. As you can see we're all dry there though but if you come down here where the crank sensor is it's soaked so there's a potential crank no start again only this time we'll be down here fixing this again so we're gonna get it fixed before it becomes a problem. But you can just tell you can just see how long it's just been. this has been going on for a long time and this is not from the intake job. I mean, this thing has been out for a year and a half before it came back to us. So, as you can see, we use Fram filters, so this thing's been changed. But you can even see that, yeah. All right, so what do you got to do next after you get the balancer off? Well, we're going to take this water pump off. We should have actually cracked the bolts while it was still under the tensioner, but that's fine. We do this all the time. Yeah, we do this different ways to see, you know, which is the easiest. But right now we're going to bind the pulley, pop the bolts. Those should be 10 millimeter bolts. It looks like someone's already had a fun time with this once. If you look right here, someone stripped the bolt because they weren't using uh, metric. They're trying to spin it with uh, standard. You can't do that. It's a half and half engine. It shouldn't be on very tight. Oh, there's on. So I can tell you this pump's been replaced once. Well, maybe not. Look at the RTV they used. It's white. That doesn't mean anything. Could have been a dealership job. The only reason why I say dealership is because of the fact it's white. Most shops use blue, like we're gonna do. Actually, I gotta look at the gasket. This, uh, the aftermarket might say no, no RTV use. All right, retain your hardware. Don't lose anything. There's a lot of little bolts. Okay, now those ones are gonna be tens. It shouldn't be on very tight. It should be like 60 or 80 inch pound. Maybe 132 inch pound. Seems like GM and a 95 and up on more torque. That's white thread sealant. That's not available to the public, so. Just prior dealership repair. Prior 50 or 60,000 miles. I didn't even seal these bolts either. Look at the other wet. They wet. Yeah, let's see, is that part of the no, there's two size bolts. They're small and big. Oh, I'm just making sure that that, that that bolt wasn't. What was it? Yeah. Did you see the gasket for the oil pump or for the oil filter deal? I didn't. The little gasket, the little square one. Mm -mm. And that mount down there, we're going to have to buy one. That mount down there is F in the B. Yeah, top bar needs to be smooth as a baby's rear. 
I gotta look and see if we can just buy a clutch for this. Whoever did this did a half-assed job. Well, like that was a flat line, I guess, or it was what's called flat rate tech. Yeah, he heard on this one. See, that's why I don't agree with the flat or er, flat rate techs. No, it leaves too much error for bad work to be done. They don't get paid when they have to warranty it. Yeah, so what's the point of a? Uh... Take a couple extra minutes to keep that car out in the road, man. Makes your work look better. I don't get it. That's why we don't work for a shop. We work for ourselves. Ew. As you can hear, we didn't have any catch buckets down below. I didn't think it was going to spray that bad. Uh, yeah. It's going to spray that bad. And when you take the front cover off, it's going to spray that bad twice. Anytime I do a very big timing cover job, I like to take cardboard and keep all my bolts in the hole they came out of. And albeit I'm not Mozart or Picasso, you know, this will suffice. Any old cardboard will do. Everybody should have some. Get rid of that. Yeah, that's my trellises. Even though we've done the water right and all that good stuff, it's still a problem. coolant needs to be serviced and as we told her it's going to have to be serviced prematurely okay there's one more bolt on the bottom to get out one bolt forgot it again it's always that last bolt And the cardboard even cleans the bolts, kind of. Alright, warp them out. Okay, anytime right. there's something like this, it's a pry point, right? Not always. Sometimes they gusset for strength. They're better off using a rubber mallet, man. They don't destroy the cover. Eh, I can do that too. Blade bone. I hate these. Yeah. It's really hard to find the impeller style, that's what the aftermarket gives you. See if it's a GMB. I have to stick in the parts washer for that. Yeah. At this point you want to give it about 5, 10, 15 minutes to drain out before you go farther. You want to let as much coolant out as you possibly can. I just want to show you what lack of service does to a water pump. Now, Mind you, this has been changed once and look how green it is. And that's because the coolant wasn't changed regularly. Even after we serviced it, it isn't going to change this. All right, we're going to let it drain. Come back to you in a bit. All right, and plug the cam sensor. You have to pull that out of the harness holder. Just move it out of your way. This Same. actually should just pop right, off. Bolt it in. I thought. Oh, it's not. Those are those are plastic uh, rivet things. It just pushes on. Mm -hmm. That's a crappy design. Well, unplug the sensor first. I'm not gonna do that till I have it off. Oh yeah, yeah, I might have to take that off first. 
Mm -hmm. How would you even get that off the covers? Blocking it. We're going to take the sensor off and clean it, make sure it's in good shape. With all this oil contamination, sometimes that oil can actually get through the sensor and that's where you get a, a code for crank problem. Or it won't start and give you no code. Four. off. Well, at least we know the timing cover hasn't been off. Apparently that, that one goes. That just smells awful. Yeah. Only if like, you know, there's like virtual reality. Smell vision. Did this water pump break? No, I think it's milled like that because yours looks like that too. Oh, dude, that just smells awful. You gotta think, we even flushed this thing how many times? Three or four. Ugh. Now it says there's a bolt over here, but there's not. It might be already out with the water pump. She's a leaker. Well, I guess in this case, he's a leaker. All your sons are away. All that stuff's going to have to be cleaned. A big bowl. Oh no, it's just the thread sealant they use. Yep. Well, they use the primer and then sealant method. We're going to use thread sealant. And then, if you did everything right, oh wait, you got the oil pan bolts. Yeah, I got to pop it real quick. And the oil filter. <laughs>